This video is talking about introduction to atoms. In this unit, we covered isotopes, atoms, um, how to calculate atomic mass, how to find the atomic number, and how to find the mass number. And we also covered the four different forces in an atom. There are four different parts of an atom. The first one looks like it's negative and it's in the outside, which would be an electron. And the next arrow is pointing to an, a subparticle is inside the nucleus, and it has no charge, which means it's neutral or ne a neutron. And the next one is looking at a positive subparticle inside the nucleus, which is a proton. And the last one is looking at the protons and the neutrons all inside the middle, which is the nucleus. I'm just going to add one more in here. The outside ring is called the electron cloud. The next one says, what is an atomic number and what does it tell us about an element? So an atomic number is a number that's specific to every element that tells us how many protons the element has. And helium's atomic number would be 2. All right, this one says create an atom for helium. So I'm asking for protons, neutrons, electrons, atomic number, valence electrons. So helium, the atomic number would be 2. It's up in the top corner. It is a whole number. And then we have to draw the picture to find the valence electrons. You put two protons, two neutrons, and then fill in your electron levels here. So you would have two in the first energy level, which means that you would have two valence electrons. The valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outside, so you don't have any in the very last or third energy level. You don't have any in the second. Your only one you have any electrons are is in the first, and you only have two. We're creating an atom for beryllium. Beryllium's atomic number is four. So it has four protons, four neutrons. You can only put two electrons in the first energy level. So I have two electrons here, jump to the next one, and you would put two more for a total of four. And if you count just the electrons in the outside, there would be two valence electrons. And we're creating an atom for neon now. Neon's atomic number is 10. So it has 10 protons and 10 neutrons. You have two electrons in the first energy level. And then you can put up to eight in the outside. So I want a total of 10. Two plus eight is 10. So the number of valence electrons I have in the last energy level, I only have eight if you count around. And we're creating an atom for scandium now. Scandium has an atomic number of 21. So it has 21 protons and 21 neutrons. You have two electrons in the first level. You can fit eight in the next one. And you can fit up to 18 in the last one. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna put in 11 more. And technically, this is a Bohr model. Bohr was actually incorrect when you get to that last level. We'll say it has 11 valence electrons, but if you look at your periodic table, it actually only has, let's see, it could have one or two things that is a transition metal. Okay, what is the difference between an element and an isotope in terms of protons, neutrons, and electrons? So an element, or an atom, atoms typically have the same number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Isotopes are different than atoms because they have a different number of neutrons.
So they would have the same numbers of protons and electrons, but the numbers of neutrons. So if you're looking at these two pictures, they have one electron and one proton in both pictures. But the atom only has one neutron, and the isotope would have zero, and that's in that first picture. What is the mass number of each isotope of hydrogen? So mass number equals your protons plus your neutrons. So in this first one, the mass number, if you count, it only has one proton, so the mass number is one. And when I say one, it's going to be an AMU. And AMU stands for the atomic mass unit. The next one. We have one proton and one neutron. You're going to take one plus one, and you would have two AMU. So remember, when we're calculating the mass number, you're not calculating, or you're not adding the number of electrons, because simply an electron weighs zero AMU. It weighs very, very close to zero, so we don't count it. All right. In this one, you're given that the atomic number is eight, the mass number is 17, and then you have to figure out the element and the number of protons. The atomic number tells you the number of protons. I'm going to put an 8. And then in order to figure out your number of neutrons, if we know that mass number is 17 and the mass number equals protons plus neutrons, I can say the mass number equals 8 plus some number that we don't know should be equal to 17. And the way you figure that out is you're going to take 17 minus 8 equals nine, so you should have nine neutrons. And your way to check is to go back and see if you add in that nine. Eight plus nine should be equal to 17. And then when you're drawing in your electrons, you need to put the same number as the atomic number. So the atomic number is eight, and put two in the first level. For a total of eight, we're gonna add just six more. And the way you know what element this is, is you're going to look at the atomic number, and the atomic number is 8. Look at your periodic table. The element with the number 8 would be oxygen. So you know this is oxygen. And then you name it by saying dash the mass number. So it's oxygen dash 17. Okay, the next one we have the atomic number is 12. So that's the number of protons. Figure out the number of neutrons the same way. The mass number is equal to protons plus neutrons, and we don't know what that number is yet, so I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to say 25 minus 12 equals 13 neutrons. And go back and see if that is true. If we take 12 plus 13, that should give you 25, so we know there's 13 neutrons. And then we're going to go back and do our electrons. You're going to put the same number of protons as electrons, because this is an isotope. So we can put two in the first level. So the name for this one, the element's name is 12, which is magnesium, dash mass number, magnesium dash 25. Okay, the next one we have the atomic number nine, so you have nine protons. Figure out your number of neutrons. You're going to take 15 equals nine plus a number, and you can go in reverse. Take 15 minus nine should give you six. Check by going back and adding nine plus six equals 15, which means we have six neutrons. 
add in your electrons, which is the same number as your atomic number. We're going to put in two in the first energy level, and then seven for a total of nine. And then I'm going to mean this one. The atomic number is nine, so the number nine is going to tell you the element. Number nine is fluorine. And this will be dash 15, since 15 is the mass number. Okay, our atomic number is 6 for this one, so we're going to have 6 protons. For our mass number, we're going to take 13 equals 6 plus our neutron number that we don't know yet. I'm going to take 13 minus 6 equals, and that should be 7. Go back into your equation, see if you're right. 6 plus 7 gives you 13. You have 7 neutrons. Add your electrons. We should have 6 electrons. 2 in the first energy level, 4 in the outside. Then look up the name if it has an atomic number of 6. Number 6 is carbon. This is going to be carbon dash the mass number, which is 13. Okay, on this one we're just going to work on naming. So it says, to identify a specific isotope of an element, write the name of the element, and the name of the element is going to be given to you by the number of protons. Do you look that up in your periodic table? Write a hyphen, that little dash, and write the mass number. So if I don't give you the mass number, you have to figure it out yourself. In the first equation, we have <coughs> six protons, six neutrons. So you're going to take six plus six equals 12. This one is going to be carbon 12. And we have six plus seven. 13, so it's carbon 13. This one we have six protons, eight neutrons, so you're going to take six plus eight. It's going to give you 14, so this name is carbon 14. So remember, these are isotopes because they have a different number of neutrons. Every single one has a different number, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, in this one we're kind of doing the reverse of what we did in those practice problems before. It says draw the following atom. You have F19 or fluorine 19. What you have to do is look up fluorine in your periodic table. Fluorine is the number 9, and that's its atomic number, which is also the number of protons. To find the number of neutrons, you can take the mass number, which is 19, minus the atomic number, which is 9, which gives you 10 neutrons. And your way to check is to go back. Protons is 9, plus neutrons is 10, should give you 19. So we know we're right. We're going to go back, <coughs> add 10, and then we need to add our electrons in. We have we have nine protons, we also need nine electrons, two in the first energy level, and you're going to add seven more so you can get a total of nine. And you should have seven valence electrons, which you can check, make sure your picture is right, look at your periodic table, and it should have a 7A on top of fluorine. And this one we're working on naming again. So in this one, you have to think which ones have mass. Electrons have no mass. Okay, the first thing we can do is find the name. So you're going to look at the atomic number, which is the protons. There's eight protons. Number eight in the periodic table is oxygen. And then you have to figure out your, uh, your mass number. So you're going to take eight plus eight which is going to give you 16 AMU. So it's going to be oxygen dash 16. So remember the reason I did not count the electrons is that electrons don't have a mass. They have a mass close to the next one we still have eight protons, so it's still oxygen. But in this one you have eight protons and nine neutrons. So we're going to take eight plus nine equals 17 AMU, which gives us oxygen dash 17. The last one is still oxygen because it has eight protons. We're going to say it's still oxygen dash, and you need to take eight protons plus 10 neutrons. Eight plus 10 equals 18 AMU, which gives us oxygen dash 18. Same idea for this one. Uh, the red is the protons, the yellow are the neutrons. So in this one we have two protons. Two protons would say that this is helium dash, and you're going to count up everything in the nucleus. And if you count those up, 
you should have five protons and neutrons. Next one, it's still helium because there's still only two protons. If you count those up, we have two, four, six. This is helium-6. We still have two protons in the last one, so it's helium dash. Count all of those circles in the middle, which is seven, helium dash seven. Last one, still have two protons, it's still helium. If you count all of those up, you should um, count eight, so it's helium dash eight. Okay, the next one. So this, I'm not giving you any pictures, you're gonna have to just do the math to figure it out and use your periodic table. The first thing you're gonna do is look at the name, we know it's manganese. And you have to be careful on this one because a lot of people confuse this one with magnesium. Manganese is MN in your periodic table and has 25 protons. So the only way I get that number is looking it up in my periodic table. We also know a couple more things. If the protons are 25, the atomic number is also 25. The mass number was given to us in the isotope name, but I just highlighted it in yellow. So we can write that one in two. We have the mass number is 56. When we're doing isotopes, we also assume that the number of protons and the electrons are exactly the same. So we're also going to give it 25 electrons. For the neutrons, you have to do some math. We know that there's 56 protons and neutrons together. So we can take 56 minus 25, which would give you 31. The next problem, we have the atomic number 21 and the mass number is 40. The atomic number tells you the element, so 21 would be scandium. And then for the name, I need to have name dash mass number, so it's going to be scandium dash 40. Scandium has 21 protons and 21 electrons. And for the neutrons, we still have to do some math. The mass number is protons plus neutrons, so to find the opposite, I'm going to take 40 protons and neutrons minus the protons which would give you 19. You should have 19 electrons. Okay, we have now covered atomic number and mass number. Atomic number is the number of protons and electrons, and it tells you the element name. The mass number tells you how many protons and neutrons are added together. What's in the nucleus? What's the mass of the element? The atomic mass is the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes masses. So in this one we have, we're assuming that there's only two different types of carbon isotopes. We have carbon 12 and carbon 13. So 12 is the mass number, 13 is the other mass number. In the equation it says we have 99% of carbon 12 and 1% of carbon 13. The first thing you have to do is move the decimal place. And you move the decimal place by putting the number after that last number. If there's no decimal place, I'm going to twice. So in this one, I'm going to have 0.99. And you put the decimal in after the 1. Move it two places to the left. We're going to put the point in. And then if you don't have a number in there, if you have an empty space in this one, you're going to add a 0. Which is why this one becomes 0 0.01. And for this one, you need to use a calculator because you probably can't do this in your head. You need to take each of these separately in a calculator unless you have a graphing calculator. You're going to take 12 times 0 0.99, which should give you 11.88. I'm going to do the next one separately. You have to press equal and you have to do it again in your calculator. We're going to take 13 times 0 0.01, which gives you 0.13. And then you can add both of those up. So 11.88 plus 0.13 should give you an atomic mass of 12.01, and we're going to have unit AMU for atomic mass units. So same type of problem, we're looking at the atomic mass, the weighted average of lithium. So we're going to take the mass number times its percent of all the naturally occurring isotopes, but first you have to convert that to a decimal. So we're going to take the decimal and we're going to move it two spots to the left, so we're going to go one, two. And in this one, we're going to put the decimal in, add a zero where there's any spaces. Do the same for the next one. We're going to move it one, two, put the decimal in. There are no blank spots, so we can't add any zeros on the last one. 
And unlike all of our other problems, we're not going to round when you, when you do a problem. If you round, you'll end up with a rounding error, and you're probably not going to find your answer on the test. Okay? So we're going to take point zero seven four two times the mass number of six added to point nine two five eight times seven. And the reason I have the parentheses is that so you know you have to do those separately in your calculator. Make sure you don't round. So we're going to take 0 0.0742 times 6, which gives you 0.452. And add that to 0.9258 times 7. And you should get 6.4806. And we can add that to 0.4452. So you should get an atomic mass equal to 6.9258 AMU. And your way to check is that your number for atomic mass has to be between 6 and 7. Okay, if you can say yes to that, you're probably right. Okay, in this one we have three different isotopes for magnesium, which means you're going to have to multiply this three different times and add three different numbers. So first off, you need to move your decimals from a percentage to a decimal number. You're going to move it twice, one, two, you get 0.787, move it twice, you're going to get 0 0.1003. Twice again, <clears throat> 0.1117. Set it up exactly the same way as last time, except this time with three different numbers. We're going to take 0.787 times 24 plus 0 0.1003 times 25 plus 0 0.1117 times 26. Okay, and multiply those together separately. We're going to take 0 0.787 times 24 gives you 18.888. We need to add that to the next one. So for the next one, we got 0 0.1003 times 25. And you should get 2.5075. And then the last one, we have 0.1117 times 26. And you should be getting 2.9042. Okay, add those together. And I got 24.2997 atomic mass units, or AMU. And your way to check that problem is to look at the smallest mass number, the biggest number you had, 2426. Is it between? It is, because it's 24.2997, so chances are you got this right. The last part we covered in this unit was the difference between the four atomic forces in an atom. So the one that binds the nucleus is called the strong force. It holds protons and neutrons together. So you had a foldable on this, you might want to go back and study that. The force that binds the entire atom is the electromagnetic force. And what the electromagnetic force says is that electrons don't like electrons, protons like electrons, and protons don't like protons. So our general idea for this one is that opposites attract. So protons to protons, same repel, which is why electrons tend to be on opposite sides of our atoms. The weak force works to stabilize the nucleus after it has gone through radioactive decay, meaning losing protons or losing neutrons. And the gravitational force 
binds the entire solar system, and it binds atoms too. So another way we talked about the gravitational force was atoms wanting to be next to other atoms due to their mass. In this one, we're working on a flow chart. It says, use the following terms to complete the constant map below. You have a nucleus, mass number, isotopes, protons, atoms, electrons, and atomic number. Our entire unit was talking about atoms. So we're going to say atoms is at the top. Atoms have a, are made up of a nucleus, and they have electrons. And a nucleus has two different parts. It has protons and neutrons. The protons would give us the atomic number. Protons plus neutrons, whose numbers added together, make up the mass number. And the mass number, because it's specific to each isotope, identifies isotopes. Like carbon-12, carbon-13 are different isotopes. And that finishes off the intro to atoms unit.